Hello, my name is Rich Nolan from Nolan Engineering in upstate New York, and today we're going to talk about what causes cracks and bowing in some foundation walls. Specifically, we'll be talking about concrete uh, block walls, not poured concrete walls, although it can happen in uh, poured concrete walls. Um, a concrete block wall, the technical name is a concrete masonry unit wall, also known as a CME wall. Uh, this construction has been around probably since the 50s and they're basically stacked up concrete blocks or typically 8 inch uh, wide blocks, 8 inch tall, 16 inches uh, long and they just stack them up on top of each other and uh, in the day they didn't put any steel reinforcement in them or they didn't fill them with concrete and what we see a lot in the field is that these walls tend to uh, push in and form horizontal cracks so here's a quick sketch of a foundation wall uh, you have your floor system sitting on top theoretically it should be anchored to the top of the wall and then the slab is typically poured to the bottom of the wall. So this thing acts as a beam that's locked at the top and locked at the bottom. Um, then you have on the outside of your house, um, the soil built up to some height. And what happens is you get this triangular pattern of a force against the wall that's called a lateral load. And that lateral load obviously pushes on the wall and because there's no rebar in the in here or if there was no rebar in there the wall tends to uh, come in like this and form a crack in the the mortar joint sometimes a couple of cracks um, and you could see that if this were to keep pushing in this could eventually collapse another thing that sometimes happens is around the first foot here you might get freezing and the ground expands and that could uh, cause a crack a little higher up on the wall. So if the, the crack in the wall if you have one is located uh, roughly even with the soil on the outside of the house or a foot below that's usually from freezing. If it's located I'd say uh, the center of the wall or lower that's usually what we call hydrostatic pressure or the weight of the earth um, pushing in the wall. A lot of times it can also be a combination of both. Another um, thing that could cause this uh, extra weight on the wall is if you have something heavy outside, let's say like a hot tub, um, sometimes there's driveways uh, right here. You might have a car parked next to the wall. Um, or a large tree. A lot of people think that's the roots of the tree that pushes in the wall and when the roots grow against the wall. That, that's true to a point, but a tree itself weighs several thousand pounds. So whether it's a car, a hot tub, a tree, a really heavy concrete patio, the weight is not strictly down. A portion of that weight also uh, goes laterally and pushes on that wall and can cause that wall to push in. Um, it's a very frustrating problem. I've seen hundreds of these. Um, there are some things you can do to repair the wall if the wall is not pushed in too much. So what is too much? Well, that varies from company to company. There is a general rule in the uh, code books that says um, if the amount of displacement is greater than one third of the wall thickness, then it's structurally unsafe. So if this were to be an eight inch wall, uh, you roughly allowed 2.6 inches of inward displacement before that wall would be uh, definitely structurally unsafe. Uh, a lot of people are uneasy with about an inch and a half. They would say you'd have to replace the wall. So what can you do if you have this issue in your home and you're not pushed in, uh, the wall is not displaced in more than uh, a half, uh, an inch and a half, let's say. Uh, first of all, how would you measure it? There's a couple ways you can measure it. You could hang a, a, a plumb bob down and, and, and measure this distance, this distance, and this distance and get an average displacement. You could also hold a level against the wall and then measure the displacement at, at the base. One other thing I should mention is not only <clears throat> does the wall, have I seen walls like this break in, displace in, but sometimes if this attachment isn't good at the top, the wall can um, also tip in. You can see it tip in, maybe not to this extent, 
or you, you'll have a combination of both. You'll have the bowing and the cracking and you'll, you'll see that wall tip in. And how you could do that if you go in your basement and you, and you look at this, this space here from the corner to the middle all the way to the other corner, if, that, if this gap varies, that wall might be uh, pushing in. So next we'll talk about uh, a couple of solutions uh, to repairing um, this wall. There's several solutions to repairing the wall. And I say repair, the solutions I'm gonna show you will typically don't bring the wall straight again. What that happens is to stop the wall from getting any worse. Um, these repairs would be considered permanent. So once again, these are repairs are really just uh, stops to stop the wall from getting any worse. Um, there are probably um, more than the three I'm gonna show you, but these are the most common that I encounter um, in day to day. So one um, solution is carbon fiber wall straps. These are carbon fiber straps, very thin, like maybe as thick as your fingernail. They're typically about a foot wide. They can be a little wider. They don't stretch. And they're applied to the inside face of the wall. All these solutions are applied to the inside face of the wall. Um, the wall has to be um, cleaned, uh, usually with a wire um, brush, uh, an electrical one or an air powered one. Um, and they're typically spaced about five foot on center, four to five foot on center. Uh, you have to clean the wall, you gotta remove any piping or electric or obstacles that are on the wall. And these things are epoxied to the wall. And because they don't stretch as the wall tries to push in more, these things won't give, the wall can't push anymore. It's like having reinforcement on the outside of your wall instead of the inside of your wall. Um, they run roughly from experience uh, the straps themselves aren't too much, like a couple hundred dollars each, but the labor's fairly intensive. Like I said, you have to clean the wall, you gotta remove pipes, oil tanks, electrical panels, or whatever is in the way, and put those on the wall. Uh, the nice thing about those is they don't protrude into the room, so you can build a wall in front of that. It doesn't take up any space. Um, another common repair is actually steel I-beams, usually I-beams, it could be box beams, or steel beams, or again, the space about the same, four to five foot apart. They have to be attached at the, uh, to the floor joist above and they have to be attached to the concrete slab um, on the floor. And the wall, again, can't push against uh, that beam. It won't, the beams won't let them c come in anymore. Uh, the drawback about that is that um, they do protrude into the room. The beams are usually four to six inches deep. Also, the beam really only makes contact uh, at the wall uh, where the wall's pushed in the most. So um, if your wall is pushed in like this and they install a beam, it really only contacts the wall right there, allowing the wall to continue to move a little bit above and below the beam. Um, but you do see those a lot in the field. Uh, a third one is a product we've developed. It's similar to the carbon fiber wall straps, except for their steel straps. Um, they're an inch and a quarter wide, and they're mechanically secured to the wall. Uh, the benefits there are typically you won't have to move uh, piping um, or electrical wires that you might have on the wall because the straps are so flexible, you can just slide behind there. Um, you also don't have to clean the wall. They're just uh, bolted to the wall, and um, they're, they don't protrude into the space at all. So I just came up with a couple of Comparison so protrudes into the space carbon fiber. No, it doesn't beams. Yes The steel strap does not do you have to clean or prep the wall? For carbon fiber. Yes Beams no Straps steel straps. No, do you have to remove uh, piping or interferences carbon fiber? Yes for sure um, For the beams yes um, you would have to move any pipes or, that are in your way because you can't go through the beam. Um, steel straps, um, probably not. You would be able to put the straps behind any piping. The only issue is it gets one bolt per block in your wall, so if the pipe happened to be right where that bolt goes, you might have to flex the pipe out of the way to get the bolt in, or you might have to remove the strap. Labor, how much labor is involved in putting these on? I think uh, carbon fiber uh, straps is kind of high labor. You really have to clean that wall. You have to mix chemicals. You have to um, be careful when you apply it to the wall. You have to pull 
you know, the, the piping away. Uh, similar uh, with the beams, um, similar, uh, have to pull piping away, have to attach it to the floor joist above, to the concrete slab below. Probably a little less labor than the, the walls, the carbon fiber wall straps. The steel straps, I would say medium to low because all you're doing there, you don't have to clean the wall, probably don't have to move piping. Um, you just have to drill uh, every block. Um, the spacing on these is a little tighter. These are uh, 16 to 24 inches on, on part, depending on the specs of the wall. Um, so you might have a little extra time doing that, but this is more a do-it-yourselfer project. Um, again, so all these solutions are similar. The carbon fiber straps and the steel straps don't stretch, don't let the wall push in. They'll also conform to the shape of the wall where the beams would not conform to the shape of the wall. They would just butt the wall where the wall comes in the most. All right, next I just want to show you a sample of a real life inspection. I, like I said, I've done hundreds of these over the years. So here's a typical block foundation where it looks like one, two, three uh, blocks down you see a horizontal crack the wall is also displaced inward and there's a sample of stuff you might see against the wall you have a um, a, a pipe uh, for what looks like the sub pump um, this is just another close-up and then looking at the, the crack uh, even closer um, and here's another example of uh, pipes we have a, a waistline a copper waistline um, some electrical wires again for the beam uh, solution you'd have to remove this for the carbon fiber wall straps you'd have to remove this but for the steel straps they would slide behind these quite easily uh, here's a, another example of a PVC uh, waistline forgot to mention too here's a picture of the outside of the house It's very important to see what you have outside there's nothing heavy um, outside this wall but if you notice there's no gutters I forgot to mention that Gutters will help because what happens is when it rains, um, the roof sheds, saturates the soil against the foundation, and it actually increases the weight of the soil quite a bit. So gutters will definitely help. Here is an example of installation of carbon fiber wall straps. The spacing here is uh, quite tight. Looks like about maybe three to four foot on center. Um, you can see how the straps are bonded to the wall. You can see where the crack used to be, approximately the center of the wall. They also uh, tuck pointed that or repointed that, which is always a good idea for any of these solutions is to seal up the crack so air and bugs uh, don't come inside. But you can see how clean the wall has to be in order to apply those straps. Of course, you wouldn't have to clean the wall between the straps, but where the straps would be located. And here's some examples of uh, steel I-beams uh, placed against the wall. You can see that some are I-beams, some are tube steel. Um, the connection at the top is important. You can see the one picture where they um, there's a connection to the, uh, the rafter, I'm sorry, the floor joist. So um, that would be important to do to make sure the beam can't move at the top or the bottom. And you can also see that these beams would uh, protrude into the room and perhaps scare away a buyer more so than the other solutions might. Here's a computer generation of uh, our wall straps uh, that we have. Uh, they're located uh, spaced around 16 inches to 24 inches on center. Um, you could see that there's typically one bolt uh, per block until you get to the bottom two blocks. Uh, there's two bolts. That's just based on the the fact that the tension um, in the strap increases as you go downward. Uh, this is for an eight foot wall. If your wall is less than eight foot, you would simply cut the portion of the strap that um, you, you wouldn't need off of the bottom. Um, the screws are, um, you just drill a three eighths inch hole and you uh, epoxy in these bolts. The epoxy is just to hold the bolts from falling out of the wall. They're actually not in tension, they're in shear. Um, as a, the strap uh, tries to resist uh, stretching. They're also bent over and screwed to the sill plate to prevent the top of the wall from displacing inward. Um, here's a test rig that we built at our office uh, to make sure these things uh, work. Um, we laid it down and we loaded it up with um, a full weight 
uh, simulating the full weight of earth as if it were filled to the top of the wall. This is for class 3 soils, which is about 60 pounds per square foot per foot depth. So that's the worst kind of in soils that you could pretty much encounter in the field. Anything less than this, there would be less load on the wall. This particular wall section has three straps and 5,250 pounds on it, and it fared uh, just just well. There's it prevented the wall from displacing. Okay, thank you for watching. If you want any more information on these straps or other products or would like to place an order, feel free to call our office at the number on the screen.